but we're not slowing down, right? Can't can't slow down like Lionel Richie and uh, uh, it's like if you were speeding, right? You're going to get pulled over. Not that I speed or get pulled over, but my point is we're moving forward with the migration uh, stuff. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to start going through the Intune device migration v6.1, I think we decided it was called. We're going to start going through the components of it, starting with the settings JSON and the main uh, start migrate. PowerShell script. Um, and we're going to keep doing the deep dives of these because people seem to like them. So yeah, we're not slowing down for anything. I almost said nothing, but that's a double negative. Okay, so we're going to get started by taking a look at what's inside the new code. Um, so what is that? Okay, yes, yeah, so you can see I've downloaded it here. This is the contents. Um, there is a new readme that kind of explains stuff. We're not going to worry too much about that. First thing we're going to look at is the settings JSON. Um, so this should be the only part you want to customize when you're um, going to deploy this script for yourself, essentially, in your organization. Um, so let's just talk about each one. So the local path, uh, that is the, actually, you know, let me get a machine ready so I could show you some of these uh, places here. Okay, so the first two, local path and log path. Um, when we look at our lab machine, I'm gonna open the file explorer and these can be cleaned up after. So I'm gonna go to C program data because that's where we're storing these things. So the first one is Intune migration. This is the path we create to essentially store all of the files that we're going to be working with so that the tasks are here, the tasks know where to go get the PowerShell scripts if you want to force a lock screen. This is a good place just to keep everything and a great way to, at the end of it, remove item, uh, directory, into migration, recurse, the whole thing if you wanted to. So while you can adjust that here, I don't recommend doing it. Um, by the way, because it's if you see the double backslashes, that's because this is a JSON format. That's uh, JSON in order to render the single uh, backslash, you have to have a double so it can technically escape that. So interesting to know. Um, log path. Now, this is another new feature that we did. So we, we used to keep the logs right here in Intune Migration, but now what we do is we keep them uh, in this program data, Microsoft Intune Management Extension logs. The reason we're doing that is this is where uh, Intune Management Extension puts all its logs. So what's really interesting is when you go to, and we're going to see if we can run this in the meantime, let me open up Intune and let's switch to the new tenant, Steve Capacity. Okay, so when we go to the device here in Intune and you collect diagnostics, okay, that's going to scrape up everything in that folder. And if that's where we are storing our logs, we're going to get our logs for our migration as well. So if we look here, device logs collected, um, we're going to hit download. Hit yes. Any day now. Thank you. We'll extract. Take a quick look. So let's go to management logs and look at this. We have our start migrate log. From the migration, right? You can see post migrate is here. We can see if we had any issues with the post migration. No new profile so this makes log collection so much easier especially if you're not in a position where you can get to the device having them locally only goes so far um so that's a great thing to be able to collect them there so very, very happy about that group tag so you have two options here you can put in a group tag or you know leave it empty um so here's the situation if you are migrating between tenants where the device already has an autopilot registration and a group tag, 
we would leave this empty, right? Because what's going to happen is it's going to go get the group tag from the source tenant graph and pull that over for us. Um, if you don't use autopilot currently, but you are going to in the destination tenant, um, you know, you can add your own group tag here so that it'll just come over and I'll show you the logic for that. Um, the registry path. So as part of our solution, right? And this again is something that can be removed later. I'll show you here. We are making some registry entries in HKLM software in tune migration. So you can see we are adding quite a few things here. So the autopilot ID, the Intune ID, um, uh, the group tag, right? That we find, um, the SID, the original SID. So these are all the objects we use to kind of overtake the old profile and we need them stored on the machine. So this is the reg path I came up with. Um, I mean, again, you are welcome to change this, uh, if there's a specific reason, but you can just leave that default. Okay. So if we take a look at start migrate, one thing you'll notice, I'm going to go ahead and open the outline is everything is a function. Okay. So, um, all of our core actions have been turned into functions and in visual studio code, it just makes it that much easier to, to navigate. So, um, if we're looking at the part that authenticates to the MS graph, we're looking right here at the function and there are some hard coded parameters and you can see when we need to, we are going to pull them from the JSON. How are they pulled from the JSON? Well, the very first thing that's happened to the function is we create a, uh, we basically input the settings.json file and create the global variable for settings. And then we call that as needed. So the trend here, is starting with logging, right? We have, instead of a write output or write host, um, we're assembling a function that takes in the message and adds the uh, time, date time stamp in front of it and writing that output. And then we just have uh, to start with basically what I would call the commandlet functions, things that run within other functions. So this is a function used much later for the join status. We can put in a type, whether that be Azure AD, joined or domain join and, you know, return a yes, no status essentially, um, to whether it's joined or not, we can get the status of the local status of the local admin account. We have a cool random password generator for if we're leaving the domain and we have to set a password, um, we could do that here and return it. So just a lot of things that can be called later. So high level, right? Just to walk you through it. Um, we are getting the, uh, settings right in the JSON, like I said, and then to start off everything we would normally do, right? Check our context, put the install flag for Intune. That's where we're doing an initialized script. So an initialized script, we're taking in some of the settings variables of local path and log path. Um, we're declaring our log name. We're declaring our install tag and we're starting the transcript and uh it's basically when we need to return something or when we need to declare a local when we need to declare one of these variables in function as a global variable we're just going to go ahead and pass the global command uh global line to the variable to define it so we can interact with it in another function so for example down here in copy package files um, our destination is the local path. So we, we don't have to call the settings again. We could just pass local path in and, um, because it's been declared as a global variable, we're pulling it into that function, right? Um, one important piece to note is that whether it's in tune or because we're running a system or the context, whenever we are referring to the iterative relative path of the script, we want to declare PS script root as opposed to dot backslash. Um, I've gotten questions about that prior, but, um, you know, I don't really know the reason. I just know that it tends to not work when you're just dot backslashing, especially up here in the settings, right? When we are ingesting the JSON, uh, that was a big problem we had in testing. So that needs to be PS script root because okay, probably the, the other important function to get device graph info. So once we have the local device info, we have to use that 
to query the graph um, to, to get the objects we're going to need to remove from the old tenant. So uh, some hard-coded variables here. Some, like the reg path and group tag, we're pulling right from the uh, settings JSON. Uh, host name and serial number come from device info. The Intune and Autopilot URIs, I'm just hard coding up here uh, so we can make those calls. And then what we do is we basically attempt to get the Intune object and we're checking it. Now, the graph is interesting because we can't necessarily check if the value is null or not. It doesn't always come back with a consistent result. So depending on the object um, we're getting back, we simply check the OData count, right? There should be one. Basically, when we pull the object back, it should have one value relative to the object we're pulling. And that's where we're getting that equals one. So if it's there, great. We're going to set the Intune ID. If not, we're just going to say fail to get that object for group tag, right? If group tag came in as null or empty, meaning if we didn't set it, then we're going to attempt to get it from the autopilot object, right? Group tag equals autopilot value dot object. We're just going to take it as is and we're going to build the global uh, device graph info variable and for each thing in there we are going to set that information to the registry so that's how that all gets set in here autopilot id intune id and group tag they get set there by iterating through um our global uh build now without going through every function i'm going to kind of scroll down here so these are all set but you'll notice they're not called so that's what the second half of the script does. So the second half of the script uh, basically says, okay, for each thing here, each function, we're going to try to do it. Um, if the function succeeds, great. We're going to call our log function and we're going to pipe out retrieve settings JSON. I'm probably going to change this to function get settings JSON success or failed so we know it's the function, not the output. Um, but I didn't get there yet. Um, the issue right now, so the way we're handling this now, and again, this is always a work in progress. If something is critical, for example, getting the settings JSON, that is a critical function. The script should not continue. If it catches with an error and we can't run it, we are going to exit the script with an exit one. This is fine for start migrate, but in later functions, um, it could be problematic. If we encounter a critical error during one of the middle boots, you're essentially stuck with a device you can't do anything with. So one of the upcoming features we're working on is having an error of basically an exit function. So if you catch a critical function, instead of exiting one, we're going to run another function that will reboot the device, make sure the local uh, logon provider is enabled so you can just log in with an emergency account, you know, and do it that way. And that's essentially the flow of the whole script. And in the end, once all the functions have run, the way they're supposed to we simply reboot the device and stop the transcript this is probably the biggest version of this we've done there's so much going on between the functions um you know having uh some of the new components like the lock screen revoking the login provider the automatic logon uh for the migration user the, the uh and the whole not migrating and taking over the sid so uh so we're going to break down certain parts of it that I'm going to highlight. If there's anything specific you want us to drill down in, uh, let us know in the Discord so I, I can see what areas are going to be of interest. I don't want to sit there going through some things that a lot of folks just aren't interested in. So uh, feel free to let me know if there's feedback, things you want to see in the solution. Absolutely call it out. Um, and uh, just glad you're along for this ride. So talk later. Five, four, three.